Moving now to those ongoing rail blockades, Ontario police remain on the scene of the Tyendinaga rail protest near Belleville after clearing the more than two-week-old blockade. Ten protesters in total were handcuffed and taken away after police moved in this morning. They all faced charges and have been released on conditions. The demonstration has crippled passenger and freight train traffic across the country, though. The CBC's Olivia Stefanovich continues to lead our coverage on this. She joins us from the scene with the latest. Hey, Olivia, what's happening there right now? Bashi, I'm at the second camp that the Mohawks of Tyndanaga have set up on along the main CN rail line here, just below me, that runs from Montreal to Toronto. And as you can see, people are still here. In fact, some are actually arriving as we're speaking. They have a fire pit with some smoke billowing here. A couple tents still set up. Police moved into the main camp this morning, which is about eight kilometers to the west down this line here. And they're still on site around this main, this second camp that's set up here. But this camp is on Mohawk property, so police have not come in to dismantle anything uh, as of this point. But I do want to point out that police are across the tracks here. If you can see, several vehicles are parked facing this camp, observing what's going on here. It has been a very eventful day here in Tyndanaga with police moving in and arresting, as you say, 10 demonstrators from the Mohawks. I had a chance to speak to one of the demonstrators who's been here since day one about everything that's transpired over the past 12 hours or so. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Reconciliation doesn't come at the end of a gun. You can't give us an ultimatum to leave somewhere that we've been for hundreds of years, that we were given as a gift by the Queen. So they come in, they're arresting our, your allies. The allies are being arrested. That is like a war crime. Now, Vashi, the Mohawks were given an ultimatum last yesterday by Ontario Provincial Police on behalf of CN Rail, saying they have to get out, clear their tracks, clear the camps by the tracks by midnight uh, last night or uh, face possible charges. And many of them chose to stay, Vashi. As you can see at this camp here, the second one here, there's still several people who are staying here and it looks like they are planning to be here for days to come. And speaking of the police, I know you were there as that sort of happened. Tell us a bit about what happened when the police did come in. Well, actually, this morning started like any other day outside of the main camp. It was a bit quiet. There was a police cruiser that came and crossed the media checkpoint down the road towards the Mohawk demonstrators. It was unmarked. So... We just thought that this was a regular check-in by provincial police. But then what happened moments later is that police trucks, SUVs, you name it, all came down this country road and police officers started getting out of their cars towards the protesters. There were dozens of police officers outside speaking to the protesters at one point. And a liaison officer actually came out. We saw from some cell phone video that's emerged. And she told the protesters that they have to uh, get back, clear the camp, or they will face arrest. There was a bit of an encounter between police. There was some um, fighting that did go on. Some some protesters were taken down by police and uh, several were arrested. But for the most part, Vashi, it's been peaceful here. I've had a chance to speak to to the Mohawks about how they feel about all of this and they say that this is not how they wanted this to to end and for them this is not over they still want RCMP to leave what's sowed in territory in northern BC that's why they've set up these camps as we understand it hereditary chiefs are meeting with the RCMP right now and a lot of people here in Tyndanaga are questioning why police couldn't wait until those discussions were over to move in. Thanks very much, Olivia. I appreciate the update, as always. The CBC's Olivia Stefanovic reporting for us from Tyendinaga, Ontario. CN rail crews have also been on site in Ontario all day, inspecting the tracks and testing equipment. The blockade has shut down rail service across eastern Canada for nearly three weeks. There have been several other protests across the country today in support of the Wet'suwet'en, including on Parliament Hill, the hereditary chiefs, that is. A few hundred people, most of them young activists, marched through Ottawa's downtown core ahead of a rally in front of Parliament. The demonstration shut down major intersections throughout the day. A large number of local police were on hand for the demonstration. So how long should Canadians expect these disruptions to rail service to last? Bill Blair is the Minister of Public Safety. He joins us from the House of Commons. Hi, Minister Blair. Nice to see you. Thanks for your time. Hello, Bashi. Minister, when does your government expect, expect rather the blockades will be totally removed and train service restored? 
Actually, we, we remain very hopeful that that will be done as quickly as possible. And, and as we said on Friday, and as we continue to say, that the impact of those blockades uh, on everyday Canadians, on the, the ability of people to do their jobs, to support their families, but also on their health and their safety is, is unacceptable and untenable. And so we have urged the people on those blockades to bring them down, to help us restore service and get those trains moving and get people back to work and, and, and provide the services that are so necessary uh, in our country. And at the same time, we remain committed to the ongoing dialogue of the underlying issues and to the reconciliation agenda. But, but it's absolutely essential that those blockades come down and that's why we've urged people to obey the law uh, to, to obey the injunctions and, and to bring those blockades down. You said you remain hopeful that that happens, that the blockades come down, that service is restored, quote, as quickly as possible. What exactly does that mean? Well, and, and, and you know, we, we are hope, remain hopeful that, that people will recognize the impact that this is having on Canadians across the country. And, you know, I honestly believe it is not the intention of those protesters to harm uh, their, their fellow Canadians. And, and I think once they recognize that potential harm, that, that they will uh, let those, those trains resume. We have also seen in, in, in Ontario today that the, the police are fulfilling their responsibility uh, to enforce an injunction in their jurisdiction. And, and, and we, we are also absolutely committed to a peaceful resolution of, of this matter um, so, so that services can be restored and we can get back to the important work of reconciliation and addressing uh, long-standing concerns uh, with, with at the, in a very respectful way with the Indigenous leadership in this country. Minister, I take your point on the actions of the OPP today here in Ontario, but though they've been uh, somewhat, they've been able to somewhat dismantle one of the blockades. My understanding is a number of protesters have gone to the other side of the tracks. They've set up another protest there. Uh, you know, again, I think there are a lot of viewers here wondering exactly when they can expect sort of a change in what's going on across this country right now. And so far, you're just giving us generalities. Well, let me be quite specific. First of all, the, the, the police operations are entirely independent of government. I am not instructing them, and, and they are following their legal responsibilities under the law, and they're following their own training, their procedures, and their, and their policies to affect the lawful pur purpose, which is their responsibility. I actually respect very much the, the, the rule of law, which is underpinned by the independence of those police operations. And, and so that will unfold as it should um, in, in a very peaceful way and, and as, as the police endeavor to fulfill their responsibilities and do their job. And at the same time, we remain committed to working with Indigenous leadership across the country to address the underlying issues that give rise to these processes. And, and so we're all working very hard to, to get that. And all of us are informed by the urgency of the impact that this is having on everyday Canadians. Now, I had a conversation just the other day with my counterpart in Quebec, and she shared with me her concern that you know, municipalities are unable to get chlor chlorine to, to make sure that their water is safe, that, that people aren't able to get propane to heat their homes, and that many workers are being laid off. And, and, and the urgency that that represents is something that I think motivates us all to resolve this as quickly as possible. And it's why the Prime Minister has called upon all of the people who stand on those barricades to, to take the barricades down, to let the service resume, come back to the table, and let's get back to the, the important discussions of addressing the concerns that they have. Again, Minister, though, I have to challenge you on the assertion, for example, that your government is doing all it can to uh, work with Indigenous leaders on this. There are specific claims, specific asks being made by hereditary chiefs. I listened to uh, 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 questions taken and answers given by Minister Miller, Minister Bennett today. I saw no evidence of a meeting between federal leadership at any level and those hereditary chiefs. Well, you know, there, there are ongoing discussions, but, you know, one of the conditions that was 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 put forward um, for, for that meeting was that the RCMP would not be able to provide services to the literally thousands of people living in that region of British Columbia. And I will tell you, the rule of law will prevail in all parts of Canada and underpinning that rule of law is the, the services and, and the protection of of independent police services of jurisdiction right across the country. And, and so we're not going to compromise on the rule of law, but at the same time, we're very open to, to ongoing dialogue. And I know that there have been considerable discussions between the BC government and their representatives. It includes the federal ministers, but, and also with the hereditary chiefs. There, there is um, a number of different individuals and, and groups that are involved in the leadership of, of the Wet'suwet'en people uh, in that region, and we are committed to dialogue with their leadership.
regardless of whether your government is committed or not, it's not happening to, uh, to an extreme degree or to a high level right now. And I'm thinking that a lot of people, both who are concerned about the economy and reconciliation, are watching this today saying, OK, one blockade has been removed, but how long until the next one gets put up? What is your government doing specifically to ensure that this doesn't, doesn't just keep happening? Because there are a lot of Canadians I think very genuinely asking themselves right now, uh, you know, how long before the next one? Well, 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 Vashi, let me also be clear. There were literally weeks and months of discussion and negotiation between the provincial authorities in British Columbia, including the, the uh, deputy commissioner um, and commander of the RCMP and uh, the, the, the Wet'suwet'en uh, hereditary chiefs on this issue. There were a number of, of concerns raised. The RCMP have responded very positively to that. They, they said last Wednesday what they were going to do. They then set out to do exactly what they had said. They have completed that task in response to that concern. I will tell you that I and know they still there was won't a meet. The hereditary discussion. chiefs still but, won't meet with the government. And, and let me be very clear, there was a 90-minute meeting that took place on Friday, after, uh, Friday evening in British Columbia, which involved the hereditary chiefs, representation from the, the B.C. provincial government and the RCMP of jurisdiction in that area. So those discussions have been ongoing and, and have been very positive. You know, there, this, this is part of a longer process of reconciliation. But while that process is underway, it is absolutely essential that the rail services be restored. The impact of its disruption is unacceptable and cannot persist. And so we have been very clear. The, but the barricades must come down, and we remain committed to that ongoing dialogue to address and redress the areas of concern that have been brought forward um, with respect to that project and other matters of reconciliation. But we can't allow these, the, the, the disruption of this service to continue to impact people so that they can't support their families and their communities and that their health and their safety may be put at risk. The impact is, is, is unacceptable. It cannot be allowed to continue. And so we are urging the people on those barricades to respect and understand and be sensitive to the impact that their actions are having on innocent Canadians to take those barricades down and we are always open to dialogue and we invite the, the, the Indigenous leadership in Wet'suwet'en and across the country to come back and re-engage with us on the very important issues that need to be redressed but at the same time let's get the barricades down, let's get services resumed and let's get, get back to a meaningful and productive dialogue. Thanks very much, Minister. Appreciate your time this evening. Public Safety Minister Bill Blair Thank you. Thank you. from the House of Commons. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.